Hey everybody, Vanguard here. Uh, congratulations, Gekipop, on winning Masters today. You played a great tournament, uh, beat me down pretty good, and, and it was well-deserved. And to duel uh, for making the finals, back-to-back uh, -back Masters with three points, it's pretty impressive. Uh, wanted to share with y'all a deck that I came up with recently. I, I think it was inspired by something that I saw a couple folks playing on the ladder. I'm not exactly sure who. Uh, maybe Little Fur uh, was playing it. Uh, not sure if anybody else was, but it's a Red Soldiers deck, and uh, on the Shrining team, we had had this little bit of a thing that we were trying to do, which was put together decks that would be competitive and easy for new players to play, and easy for new players to get the cards for. And uh, I took up the challenge of putting together a deck that was just common and uncommon cards and uh, decided that soldiers would be the way to go. Y'all know I like soldiers. Ended up taking it to the top spot on the ranked ladder um, and thought I'd share it with you all because pretty much anybody who's watching this video should be able to build this deck. And in my opinion, it's probably the strongest aggro list out there. So as I said, it relies only on common and uncommon cards. And specifically, we'll just go through the one drops. You're running uh, eight of them in this. So Sentry of Light, which is not a soldier. Steelhost Spearman, pretty straightforward. It's a soldier. Uh, it's got three speed. It's good against Rage Rush. It's good when you can get it to two or three uh, to become a two-two or a three-three uh, in a defensive position because it gets ranged. Sentry of the Light is in here because... Uh, it provides a lot of tempo for you in the early game and allows you to make some interesting trades. In particular, uh, Sentry of the Light is in here for the matchup against control decks because the ability to put an early Valor token on a Temple Guard can win the game for you. But yeah, those are your one drops. You're running eight of them, Steelhost, Spearman, and Sentry of the Light. And then of course you've got the Hero Power, which you can't play turn one, but you'll be able to play a good rest of the time. Two drops. We've got 10, and really, my take on these is you can take your pick between Musketeer, which isn't in here, Dwarf Spellbreaker, Steelnor Innkeeper, and Temple Guard to come up with, depending on how you want to build the deck, somewhere between 8 to 10 uh, of those cards total. What I ran is, uh, most importantly, four Temple Guards. This card is one of the key cards in the deck. It's one of the things that has made soldiers go since the patch. Specifically, uh, Temple Guard allows you to do a lot of damage to control lists uh, because it's a very, very hard card to remove for a control deck. And when you pair it with the ability to play a Temple Guard on either turn one, if you've got the Spark, or on turn two, followed by a Sentry of the Light the next turn uh, to put a shield on it, Temple Guard can get you a whole lot of tempo in the early game. Then we're also playing Steel Nor Innkeeper. A little bit worse than it used to be, but that stupefy ability is still pretty spectacular. And the ability to return cards to the deck, like there's some non-soldier cards in your deck here. And with the amount of, uh, on the ladder, at least recently, uh, decks that run in still life, Oftentimes you might want to get things out of your opponent's graveyard. Innkeeper will allow you to do that. Uh, the other two drop here is Spellbreaker. You could play Militia. Militia is a decent card to play, particularly if you think you're going to face a lot of Rage Rush. Um, I'm playing Spellbreaker here because there are a lot of random spells out there that I want to be able to take care of. Uh, Burning Rage is a good thing to get rid of. Radiance is tough for this deck and you want to prevent Radiance from getting on the field. Um, Tombs is probably the other big one that you get an early Spellbreaker and unless your opponent can remove it, they can't play their Tombs. So those are the two drops. I'm running 10 of them. I think you could make a case to just run 8. And again, for those 10, just choose between uh, Spellbreaker, Innkeeper, Temple Guard, and then Militia, which, not, which is not on here. Uh, my take though is that you absolutely need four Temple Guards. That's key. The other two drop that's not a creature, guards, guards, you need four of them. Uh, you may think that you don't need four of them. You need four of them in this deck. This is a straight up aggro deck. Guards, guards is going to be able to swing tempo for you against a couple of lists out there, specifically against Rage Rush. And uh, it gives you the ability to swing in for a lot of damage unexpectedly. This is a card that you hold and you play usually at the very end of your opponent's turn. 
Um, you need four. And I'll try to show you a sample game so you can see why. Um, then we're, we'll go to the uh, three drop cards. So you'll see, first of all, we're not playing Knight Recruiter. Reason for that was because, well, the challenge I set for myself was commons and uncommons only. Knight Recruiters are rare. I also found I'm not sure you need Knight Recruiter. So we are playing eight of the um, three drops. Oh, sorry, uh, for the two drops, I also forgot Fireball. You're not usually playing this as a two drop because you're always opening order, but Fireball is, is Fireball. It's an auto include four of, and the thing that, it's one of the things that makes this deck go, both because it gives you some removal that uh, more aggro soldiers decks haven't had that's pretty cheap like a fireball at two mana is often much better and easy earlier to play than a ray of righteousness at three mana and uh, it gives you reach soldiers sometimes get stuck like you get your opponent down to five or six or three health and then you and then you lose board control and you don't have the reach to close out the game with fireball you do um, okay, so yeah, three drops. Uh, there are eight of them. Elite Vanguard is the creature here. Uh, obviously, I like Vanguard as a creature. It's just solid all around. Two mana, three, three. It gets buffed. It can be a token. Uh, it's real hard to deal with for a lot of decks in the meta, and uh, you want to run four of them, and oftentimes you're going to play it on curve. The other thing we're running four of is Massive Assault. You might think that that's kind of ridiculous and that this is a win more card. Uh, I found in this list it's not so much. Uh, you will often Divine Offer it away. It's not necessary in every single matchup, but in the matchups where you want it, for instance, against Control, where you want to spark a guard's guards, for instance, uh, at the or drop a guard's guards at the end of your opponent's turn and then sneak in for four damage, or if you have Massive Assault on the... two Massive Assaults on the board, six damage. Uh, these things add up pretty quickly. And I'd think of it as like a fireball for creatures. Like you're spending two mana here. If you can get two or three damage out of that, like that's a success for you from Massive Assault. You don't need Massive Assault to contribute eight, nine damage to your game, although in some games you will. You need it to be like another fireball because this deck is all about getting cards on the board, converting them into damage quickly, and killing your opponent. Uh, Last card, the uh, four drops, or the, the biggest cards in the deck. So Tactician, it's a soldier's deck. You're playing four Tacticians. It's a great card. Um, yeah, there's not a lot more I could say about that. Forced Labor, you're playing three of them. Uh, you could maybe make a case to go to four of these. This card is great um, because you have a lot of ways to activate your Forced Labor between Guards Guards, between your hero power. Uh, you got a lot of one and two drop creatures. Oftentimes, you will play Forced Labor on curve over a Tactician on curve because Forced Labor is going to put more damage on the field for you and really creates a lot of challenges for an opponent. Like, if you're playing Mono Corruption and uh, you, you're relying on Suffocate to clear the board, there's not a lot you can do against Forced Labor, and then next turn you get hit with a Guard's Guards and a Hero Power for three mana, and that Forced Labor is active. And if your opponent's got massive assault on the board, those orcs are swinging for a lot of damage. So um, yeah, Torch Force Labor is a great card in this deck. Uh, we're including three of them here because you don't usually want to play two of these. If like if you play two of these and you haven't won the game, uh, that's pretty surprising. And then for the shrines, uh, we are running. I don't know how many order shrines. How many order shrines are we running here? We got nine order shrines. We got our soldiers memorials, of course, two of them. We got eight rage shrines, so 19 shrines. That's the deck. It is all commons and uncommons. So if you're a new player, you should be able to build this real easily. Uh, if you're a new player, you started with the Angelic Legions deck, so you already have Alexa as a hero. You already have a decent number of the cards in this list. If you uh, move your next deck into rage, you're going to get fireballs, massive assaults, force labors real quickly. You just play a few drafts. You can draft these cards. Um, this is a pretty easy deck. Uh, there's not a single rare in here to emphasize that. And without a single rare, we're at number one on ladder. And uh, I went undefeated with this particular list in Masters today. So hopefully I can I can uh, show that as uh, hopefully I'll be able to play it well. There, this is usually a, a fairly slow time of night. So let's see if we can get. 
let's see if we can get a friendly game. And then if we don't get one, we'll just play against the computer because um, I don't want to waste y'all's time here waiting for a matchup at a time of night when sometimes it's unusual to get one. So uh, what are the matchups like for this deck? It is almost impossible to lose to Mono Corruption Control with this list. Uh, mono Corruption Control is just too slow. And they don't have answers to most of your cards. And, uh, well, I did see Hall Y'all lose uh, in Masters with this deck against Mono Corruption Control. Um, I mean, that's just our team leader, and uh, doesn't surprise me to see him. No, I'm kidding, Hall. Uh, yeah, you got unlucky there. Uh, most of the time, I don't know what the win rate is for me against Mono Corruption Control. I don't think I've ever lost a game. Um, all right, we're going to play against the AI here, and we'll see how that goes. I mean, it's a fairly straightforward deck, so there's not a lot that y'all need to see me do here. Okay, so Neva is the hero. First thing we're doing when we play this is we're looking to see, like, is our opponent playing control or aggro? Because against control, we're always going to mulligan for temple guards. This is more of an aggro deck, I think. Uh, it's probably elves. And against elves, I mean, this is fairly decent starting hand. So we'll just keep it, see what happens here. We're also going to draw a card. Um, all right, cool beans. So we'll go up the Order Shrine. That gives us the option to spark into Guards Guards if we want to. We're probably not going to do that unless uh, he plays something really ridiculous. Or if he plays nothing, that's another good reason to spark into Guards Guards because then you get two free damage. And again, the deck we're playing is all about turning cards into damage as quickly as possible. So uh, we're going to try to maintain card advantage. We'll use our hero power. We're just getting lots of things on the board because unless uh, the AI has an answer here, we're going to play this Massive Assault next turn, and then we're going to play this Master Tactician, and uh, the game is almost going to be over at that point uh, unless uh, they pull a rabbit out of their hat here. Yeah, so uh, we got a Brothers in Arms. We can just kill that with two of our little uh, militias because we'll be able to hit them. So uh, we will go up, we will play Massive Assault. So like first thing to know, right, like I can't click here. This is an interesting mechanic. I hope this isn't a bug, Ivko. Please don't watch this and take this away from me. You can't attack here. However, because of the way Militia works, Militia gets one spell point plus one as long as its attack is greater than one. This is going to give it plus one attack when it attacks. So if you want to like hit these guys here, attack first, then you can just break them off like this, and uh, the game lets you do it. I think that's the way it's supposed to work. I hope that's the way it's supposed to work. Ivko, please don't take it away from us. I like that it works that way. Um, it's not like a necessary setup to this deck. It's just like a, a cute little feature of what we're running here. So, um, we got him down to 14. That's pretty good. We don't have any burn cards in hand. He just played more Brothers in Arms. That's not ideal, uh, but we can handle it. So, um, do, 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 do. so, we could go Master Tactician here. That would allow us to kill one of the Brothers, or if we're not killing one of the Brothers, get a free trade. So, that's what we're going to do. So, uh, we will attack there. We have a choice here with our um, with our little Steel Host Spearman. We could go face, that forces either the block from the Elf Scout or forces him to go down 14. But I kind of want to hold it back because I want to put those brothers, I want to prevent those brothers in arms or from killing this tactician in the event that he blocks there or he has something swift. So we're just going to see if he, he either has to kill it and then we, we get a nice two for one, yeah. So we got the two for one. We'll hold our uh, our nice ranged little soldier back, and we get hit with a landslide. Um, current order here, yeah, I think we want the massive assault on top, but it doesn't really matter because we're only going two aspects, so we're just going to draw a card anyway. So interesting thing about this deck, just to like take a look at what we've got in hand, different cards are going to play a role in different matchups. Like, Innkeeper, not hugely important in this matchup. Certainly, we don't need two of them. So we'll go down to one. Um, Temple Guard, key card in a lot of matchups. Not in this one, because uh, this is not a control deck. 
All right, so now we've got options. Um, we almost certainly want to get the Elite Vanguard on the field. Massive Assault, if we play it again here, is just one damage for us at this point, which probably we want to drop it next turn when we're able to attack with more. So we'll go uh, Tactician to the face, and then we're going to get three more creatures on the board. We're going to play my namesake, the Vanguard. We're going to play Steel Horse Spearman. We're going to Hero Power. And see, like now, even if he's got another landslide, and he does, um, we want to draw the Vanguard there because we're going to use Hero Power. There's just like not a lot that the AI can do. And I don't think the AI is playing this badly. And, um, and honestly, this is what a lot of decks have as their experience. So do we, we don't have a soldier in the graveyard. Uh, so we probably don't want to do the soldier's memorial. So let's get rid of that and get another card because we'd prefer a card right now. Um, and we can go, we'll probably get the trade there unless he's holding ambush strike would prevent the trades. So we probably want massive assault just to guard against the ambush strike. And let's get Vanguard on the field just because I like the card. So that should be a trade if he's got Ambush Strike, yeah, which he doesn't. Okay, seven, now that he's down to seven, we're running four Fireballs. Um, at this point, we just need to do seven more damage with what we've got on the field and four Fireballs. So even if a turn like that happens where everything gets knocked off, we're still gonna be able to put through two damage next turn and we got a fireball, so that's five damage that we got in hand. We just need to find two more damage somewhere else, and we're definitely gonna find that two more damage somewhere else. So here gets us to five. We'll hold the fireball because I don't think there is anything he could possibly be playing that would force it out of our hand. Uh, again, we'll divine offer away the temple guard just because in this map, like in a lot of mass jumps, it's an all-star. In this one, it's not. So yeah, this is just delaying the inevitable. And that's game. Well, I guess a double tornado outbreak would have stopped it. But yeah, so that is Rage Order Soldiers. I'm not going to try to get it on ladder. Like, it would be nice to see a game, I'm sure, against like another opponent. But as y'all could tell, like this is a pretty straightforward thing to play. You're not gonna see a lot of nuance, like stuff to remember. You hold the guards' guards. Um, you play Temple Guard against Control and against other decks, it's not as important. And uh, you'll often play Force Labor, although you didn't see it that game over Master Tactician. There are things you could do to potentially improve the deck here. Like you might wanna cut from Let's say, what do we have here? We got 10 two drops, two drop creatures plus the, ten, the guards guards. You might wanna cut that down a little bit. You might wanna run some CFCs. Uh, that can be good. Fire Blast is good and great in the mirror match. Like if a lot of people start playing this after I put the video up, um, then, then you might wanna fit a Fire Blast in there. That breaks my rules though, of just commons and uncommons. Those are rare cards. Um, you might want to consider Night Recruiter uh, or Soul Projection. Uh, both of them can be a big deal and can help turn the tide, but I think it's pretty strong the way it is right now. Uh, and yeah, last thing I'd note is that not only am I at number one with this, but Crazy Legs is my wife's account, which I was playing on a little bit just because she likes to open cards and I was uh, trying to get her some gold and, and some crystals and end up qualifying for masters on her account um, just because I tried this deck, she had the cards to play it even though she doesn't have all the cards or even close to them and uh, it went into top five. Hall Y'all is also playing pretty much the exact same list. So uh, yeah, you got three players in the top six. Half of the top six is playing the deck that I just showed you and uh, hopefully y'all enjoy it. Thanks team.